Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fantastic. CES 2023 is now going on, and unfortunately, I'm not there. I just couldn't be. But that also means that a lot of companies are showcasing their brand new products. And I'm sure you've seen hundreds of videos from other creators showing you how well these products work or if they work. But today, I'm just going to bring you a recap of the last few days of XR and VR news and the things that are happening at CES, and hopefully shove as much of that into a single video. So I'm mystical, and let's jump right into it. First thing first, we're going to start off with some quest news. As usual, I do believe that that's what most of you are here for. And this one is going to be for comfort. And it's made by a company that I didn't exactly expect, Razer. It's a Quest 2 head strap and facial interface. I myself have a Razer Blade 15. I've actually had quite a few problems with that laptop in the past, but they all seem to be solved now. And other than that, the build quality is actually quite okay. So I would assume that when they release something like this, the build quality is also going to be really good. Not only that, but if you actually look at the head strap, it's a little bit of a different design than we would normally be used to. Hopefully allowing you to actually lay down in this. And yes, there's actually quite a large market for people that want to lay down in VR and watch some movies on our ceiling and allowing for really nice weight distribution. This takes a different approach to Meta's official Elite head strap by removing the rear wheel and instead opting for adjustable straps. Here is Razer's full description. The Razer adjustable head strap was created with all head shapes in mind. The high performance nylon material provides reliability, comfort, and durability, while the optimized weight distribution allows for more balance during active gameplay. The soft adjustable straps will help gamers find their perfect fit and a quick slip on design in ensures little interruption in resuming gameplay. It's really interesting. Again, the design here is different to most other designs that we've seen, and it's kind of edging more towards the default head strap rather than something like the Elite head strap. It also allows that slip on, slip off design that head straps like the Elite head strap don't allow for, as you need to turn the wheel. So this could be a good option for a lot of people. However, there is no extra battery. I mean, I'm sure people will find a way. People always find a way. But because it's different to other head straps, the only place I can think of is possibly the top. Other than that, it looks like the weight distribution on it would actually be really, really nice. And then secondly, we have Razer's facial interface. And Razer claims this will remove facial pressure and reduce skin irritation, the latter being a known problem with the original Quest 2 facial interface. So in case you want to read more on this, I will leave a link to the article down below. And yeah, it's nice to have more options. And I am definitely going to get my hands on the head strap here. I'm definitely more interested in that than I am in the facial interface. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. And let's move on to the next piece of news. Vibe's XR Elite has officially now been announced, and it's actually cheaper than we originally thought. It's not $1,500 like the leak originally suggested. It's actually $1,100. And this is a Quest Pro competitor. It's not a Quest 2 competitor, but it's still a really interesting product for a lot of people. And Vibe's XR Elite has a compact design achieved via the use of pancake lenses, which look to be the same as the Vibe flows lenses from late 2021. It's powered by the same Snapdragon XR2 Gen 1 processor as seen in most standalone headsets. Like the Quest Pro, it also supports mixed reality via color pass-through. HTC pitches the Vive XR Elite's pass-through as noticeably superior with higher resolution and dynamic range. This is interesting. I am looking for something that would have better color pass-through than the Quest Pro. Even though this thing costs a fortune, the color pass-through really doesn't show it. It also features a depth sensor, which was dropped from the Quest Pro last minute to automatically mesh your room so virtual objects can collide with real objects. Quite important for mixed reality if you ask me, and the Vive XR Elite comes with Quest 2 style tracked controllers and also supports controller-free hand tracking. The dual LCD displays have a resolution of 1920 by 1920 each, slightly higher than the Quest Pro, and a refresh rate of 90 Hz. HTC is claiming up to a 110 degree field of view, but didn't specify whether this is horizontal or diagonal. The lens separation is adjustable via a slider on the exterior of the headset for IPDs between 54 and 73 millimeters, but there's no built-in eye tracking, so the IPD won't be measured. The lenses also have a diopter adjustment for people with impaired vision, so some glasses wearers won't need to wear them to get a clear image. Vive XR's Elite included battery is near the rear of the strap, so much better weight distribution, but it can be detached so you can use any other USB power source. This lets you lean back against a seat or a sofa, something that isn't possible on headsets like the Quest Pro 
or Pico 4 comfortably. And then there's some unique features like the ability to stream your Android phone's display into VR so you can view apps like Disney Plus or mobile games on a personal cinema screen. Some people would say that the Quest 2 actually allows you to install APKs, which is better than streaming your phone screen to the headset, possibly even allowing for a larger screen and better aspect ratio, but it's still an interesting feature. Yeah, the Vive XR Elite isn't going to be for everyone, but in case you're looking to buy the Quest Pro, this might be a valid option to take a look at, and it's definitely an interesting new device. Now, what disappoints me here is the 90 hertz refresh rate and the 1920 by 1920 pixels per eye. I was honestly hoping for a little bit better at this point, but you know what? It is a competitor to the Quest Pro, and I'm going to be interested to see how many people go for this over the Quest Pro, even though it lacks eye tracking. So uh, yeah, next piece of news. Talking about new headsets, we're getting super compact headsets nowadays, and the Shiftall Megan X PC VR headset is no different. But the thing is, it ships for $1,700. So you're not getting it cheap. None of these are what I would call consumer-friendly price tags. They're more like prosumer price tags, which uh, is interesting. But we still have the supposed Quest 3 to look forward to this year. The Megan X PC VR headset is set to release in spring for $1,700. The Megan X is the first modern VR headset to ship with OLED micro displays, which enables it an ultra compact design. The micro displays have a resolution of 2560 by 2560 60 per eye and support HDR, high dynamic range. It connects to your PC via DisplayPort 1.4 port on an NVIDIA graphics card. AMD actually isn't supported right now, so I wouldn't even be able to use it. And a USB 2.0 port via the included 3 meter cable. It supports SteamVR on Windows. The headset has built in inside out tracking via two side mounted cameras handled by the onboard XR1 chip. To use tracked controllers, however, you'll need the alternative SteamVR Lighthouse Tracked mode, requiring the base stations via the included adapter adapter which connects to the top of the headset as seen in the image above me right now. It's nice to see headsets that have inside out tracking allowing for lighthouse based tracking as well. I know for a fact I would love the Quest 2 that much more if it had the ability to be tracked via lighthouses as that would allow me to use all other sorts of controllers with the device and also allow for just better tracking and less occlusion which would be fantastic and it's nice to see other companies allowing for that now. So yeah it's nice to see some you know smaller headsets coming to the market now, possibly allowing us to wear them for longer and forget that they're there much easier. Let me know what you think about headsets like this coming to the market down below. Okay, here is one that so many people are excited for, Apple's VR headset. And we now have apparent specs and features of Apple's upcoming headset. I need some coffee. The Information has published a new report detailing the designs and features of Apple's upcoming headset. So let's take a look at the rumored Apple Mixed Reality. Comparing it to the Quest Pro, the rumored Apple Mixed Reality is supposedly going to have an 120 degrees field of view. It's going to have automatic lens separation and it's going to have micro OLED displays. It's going to have 4K pixels per eye and it's going to be using the Apple M2, which is a five nanometer CPU. It's going to have high resolution, pass through, whatever that is supposed to mean. It's going to have room meshing, eye tracking, face tracking, hand tracking, leg, tra leg tracking? I do wonder how they're planning on doing that. If they're planning on doing it with cameras on the headset, I am going to be truly amazed, to be completely honest with you. There's no other way to say that. I am going to be incredibly amazed if they manage to do it with cameras on the headset. It's going to have a waist tether for the battery location. Interesting. It's going to have a two hour battery life. I assume that can be extended via the help of a battery pack. And it's going to have uh, external display support. I'm not entirely certain what that means, but it's going to have it. And it's going to have 2D native apps via the iOS app store. Supposedly the price tag will also be $3,000, which wouldn't surprise me. But to be honest, if they manage to get leg tracking done via cameras, congratulations, Apple. Uh, I, I don't buy many Apple products, but that would probably that would impress me quite a bit. I mean, the Apple M1 already impressed me quite a bit, but that would be on a whole new level of impressed to me. There's no 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Wow, I am so surprised. But uh, yeah, to be completely honest with you, I am looking forward to Apple's VR headset. It's a trend in the industry that wherever Apple goes, other companies tend to follow. And if Apple succeeds in the VR and AR market, other companies are going to be like, yeah, that's something worth investing in. And hopefully they're going to jump in. But let me know your opinions down below. Now, let's do a rapid fire round 
of news. Beat Saber has been confirmed for the PlayStation VR 2. The PlayStation VR 2 is being showcased during CES of 2023, and we now also have confirmation that the meta-owned Beat Saber is going to show up on the PlayStation VR 2. So, I mean, yeah, I was honestly hoping for this. <laughs> I mean, I'd be surprised if it didn't. It's on the PlayStation VR 1. But in case you were wondering whether it's going to show up or not, yeah, that's now confirmed. It's showing up. Here is one that's uh, really funny. Acer's Bike Desk. Yeah, Acer's showing off a bike desk during CES of 2023, which can charge the Quest 2 in 2.5 hours. Are you looking for a new VR fitness companion? The new Acer eConnect BD3 bike desk can now fully charge a Quest 2 headset in roughly 2.5 hours from pedaling. Unveiled during CES of 2023, the eConnect BD3 provides an eco-friendly way of charging electronic devices by converting pedaling into energy. The eConnect BD3 can be set between two modes. Working moves the desk closer to the chair and sporting lifts the desk up for greater leg space. Working stats are tracked through a companion smartphone app where you can set up personal profiles that account for your height, weight, age, and more. What an interesting way to get fit while working. Standing desks are a thing. Why not have bike desks? And why not use that energy to charge your devices at the same time? Am I right? Is this something that would interest you? I don't know. I don't know whether it would interest me. Definitely not here. I don't have enough space for it. But it's definitely quite an interesting concept. And I am all in for eco-friendly technology. So, you know, I mean, yeah, why not? The wireless XTOL 3, in case you don't know, the XTOL is like one of the most powerful, expensive headsets out there, apparently. I never got to try it, so I wouldn't know. But there's a wireless XTOL 3 that aims for a Q3 of 2023 release. The super wide field of view headset, the XTOL 3, is getting a wireless option. While the headset offers a native 4K resolution per eye, according to VR engineers, the wireless mode compresses the resolution to 2560 by 1440 at 70 hertz per eye and transmits it wirelessly via a belt-worn module to IMR Next's Wi-Fi 6E access point connected to a capable computer. That's really interesting, to be completely honest with you, that resolution at 70 hertz, I don't know, I feel like we can do better nowadays. Yeah, sure, uh, I mean, Pimax's headsets do that over a wire, but I don't know, I feel like I've been kind of spoiled by higher resolutions and higher refresh rates nowadays, and I really wouldn't want to go back. But let me know your opinion down below. The Lynx R1 is now beginning to ship as it's also ramping up production. The highly anticipated mixed reality headset, the Lynx R1, is starting to ship to its earliest backers. To quote, Kickstarter backers will be shipped first, as well as experienced developers to showcase cool experiences on the Lynx R1, an update from the company noted in December of 2022. The first shipment of headsets leaving the factory on December 9th. Therefore, some units are already assembled. Those headsets will be way more polished than the ones we've shown in events and trade shows these past years, but won't have the same color as the final version. The headsets will be delivered with an immersive VR interface. So yeah, the Lynx R1 is a headset that a lot of people are quite excited for. It's supposed to have really damn nice color pass through, and it's supposed to be one of the best AR headsets to be out there right now. So yeah, I'm super happy for the backers of the Lynx R1 to finally be getting their devices, and I can't wait for the videos to start coming out showcasing them and how well they actually work. And finally, big W for the Microsoft Mixed Reality platform. Windows MR usage has grown on Steam following the deep HP Reverb G2 discounts. Windows MR is the fastest growing headset type on Steam in December. The data is collected and shared on the Steam VR hardware survey. And after each month, this includes a breakdown of the relative usage of each VR headset and the percentage of overall Steam players using any headset in that given month. And as you can see here, the Quest 2 is still at the top. After that, we've got the Valve Index, then we've got the Rift S, then we've got the HTC Vive, but the largest growth on this graph is 0.32 in the Windows Mixed Reality category, which seems to all just kind of be smushed together. But I do assume that most of those people using Windows Mixed Reality are using the HP Reverb G2. If you're using a Windows Mixed Reality headset, please let me know down below. Which one are you using? But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned something new and hopefully you got what you came for. If you did, please leave a like. It helps the channel out a lot and it costs you nothing. If you disliked the video, this button does work too, but let me know why down below. Thank you so much to the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, paying my bills, paying my subscriptions and helping me make these videos better. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.